Welcome to New England Crypto and East Coast Hardware. My name is Matthew. We are a crypto mining family. In today's video, we are going over the best hardware options for getting started with Bitcoin mining and not financial advice, but I'm going to show you exactly which one I think is the best to get started for beginners and show you exactly why. Here on this table, we have three of the main options that you will find if you start Googling or researching Bitcoin mining. Please feel free to leave any questions down in the comments below. Here we have USB stick miners. This option uses the least amount of power, but it is also your lowest hash rate option. More on that in a few. Here is the Bitmain Antminer S9 13.5 terahash Bitcoin ASIC. The Antminer S9 is built to last, housing a total of 189 ASIC chips over three hash boards, also known as circuit boards. The ASIC chips are basically the heart of the machine. They are responsible for crunching the numbers that ultimately results in the actual Bitcoin mining. Back to the S9 shortly. Over here is a Koi Miner C16 Bitcoin ASIC. This machine is very close to the Bitmain Amp Miner S19. I have S19s in the other room, but with how Bitcoin is pumping right now, there's no chance I was unplugging those guys just for a little camera time. Luckily, we have options around here. Both the Koi Miner C16 and the Bitmain S19 are the highest hashing options here, which usually makes them the most profitable and highest yielding. They're also very power hungry and loud AF. These big boys only run on 220, 240, or 277 volt outlets, which makes them even less realistic for beginners, unfortunately. We're talking over 3,000 watts to get them even close to the 95 terahash the S19s are spec for. Look at that, 3,250 watts for 95 terahash. The USB stick miners average 15 gigahash at just 14 watts each, which sounds great until you do the math between these and the S9. It would take over 900 of the USB miners to equal one S9. And 900 USB miners, even at just $20 each, if you could find them that cheap, would be over $18,000 and use well over 12,000 watts. Whereas a stock S9 is looking at 13.5 terahash at 1,300. 323 watts. I think the USB stick miners can be very cool. They look awesome on your desk, but they can be pretty complicated to get up and running for beginners. The big A6 tend to be way too power hungry for beginners. I know they were for me at first. So in my humble opinion, if you're looking to really get started with learning about Bitcoin mining in a hands-on fashion, the Bitmain Antminer S9 is hands down the best option for you. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get this one up and running using one of our server power supplies from Parallel Miner. You can also use the Bitmain power supplies that run on 110 volt outlets just like the L3 Pluses with these, but I love these server power supplies. Before we get it up and hashing, let's take a look at its profitability because I know a lot of you are going to be more interested in that than anything else, even though we're talking about education and learning today, not profitability. As you can see, this thing loses money even at seven cents like we have here at the facility. The higher up you go, the more you lose, but you learn the same either way. This doesn't need to be a full-time, long-term thing. This can just be so you can get learning and it goes the same the other way. The lower your electricity rate is, the more you make or less you lose, depending on how you look at it. If the only thing you are worried about here is profitability, then we need to step it up and take a look at the S19s and S21s. These guys use a ton more power and they are a lot louder, but you make a lot more money. Even at our electricity rate, we're looking at $5 a day in profit almost, $10 a day before electricity. The higher the electrical rate, the lower the profits, again, the same amount of learning. And it does go the same way here as well. The lower your electrical rates are, the more money you're going to make or less you're going to lose. It all depends on how you're going to look at it. You get some low electrical rates, some S19s can make real good money. We aren't running any here at the facility yet, but we also sell S19K Pros and S21s. 
Okay, let's get this S9 up and running. There she is, looking good. If you're using a power supply that runs on a regular 110 volt outlet, you can use a regular 110 volt power cord. Go ahead and plug it in, easy peasy. We're gonna have to bring it home and plug it into the 240 and get a program though, cause I'm running out of time here today. All right, all right, all right. Back in the original studio at the house, we needed to build and deliver a couple of GPU mining rigs for a client that we sold recently. He asked us not to make public content on it, so we took care of it for him. It's been a couple of days, and I am very excited to get the S9 up and hashing. I'm waiting to wire manage those beautiful chain critical wires once it's in its final home for the bull run. Here's our 240 volt power cord to go directly from the PDU to the PSU. And then we have our Cat6 Ethernet whip so we can get it online. Here's our 240 volt trip light PDU and our 240 volt server power supply. 240. These guys do not run on 110. Let's go ahead, plug it in, fire it up. And now to make sure it's mining into our wallet and not the previous owners, we need to get into the web GUI by inputting the device's specific IP into a web browser that's on the same network. We use Eero access points, so we get notifications as soon as a new IP appears on the network. I love that. We'll bring that over here and type it into the browser on this laptop. Please be patient with me as I try to do this one-handed while trying to film it all. and don't rush like I did and skip one of the periods. We'll go ahead and copy and paste that to fix it real quick. My apologies, I'm trying to go quick with this so that I don't drag the video out on you guys, but obviously this is real life and this is the kind of stuff that can happen. All right, that's better. And the factory password on these miners is either usually root root or admin admin. All right, there we go. Looking good so far. I never saved the passwords for those, but we're in the web GUI, buddies. And it looks like it's right on par, running at right around 1,323 watts or so, like spec to do. Awesome. Let's go ahead and delete all of the info that the previous owner of this machine had in the configuration so that we can input ours and get it up and running on our F2 pool account. Not sponsored. Over on f2pool.com, we'll scroll down and click on Bitcoin because we need the stratum and port information for the miner configuration. We're in North America, so we'll click on that. Make sure you click on the one, choose the one that you need for your area. This will show all of the stratum, port, and alternative ports. We'll go ahead and copy and paste that. We'll head back over to the web GUI, paste that in the URL line, and then we're gonna change the port on this one to end in 3333 because we've had the best luck with that with other miners. So we're gonna go ahead and use that one here too. For the worker name, when using F2 pool, you put your account name, dot, and then the worker name. So for me, 
It's necrypto.stellas9. I keep the password as X, sometimes use 123, and then make sure that you go down, click Save and Apply. The reason that the worker name on this one has Stella in it is because we got this S9 for my daughter's birthday for her to be able to learn on. She was super excited to get her first Bitcoin ASIC. She's eight years old and she's been mining Dogecoin, Litecoin, and ETC for a couple of years now. Man, it's so exciting to have my family along the ride with this journey with me. Keep your eye out for an upcoming video where we'll be putting this S9 on Unminable to stack some more Uniswap for her. Let's do a quick refresh. Oh yeah, looking good. Running at right between 13.5 to 13.6 terahash. Let's take a quick look at the F2 pool app and make sure that everything's looking good on the phone. We'll go over to workers. Yup, there it is. All three are up and running. And there's that hash rate spike. Beautiful. I love this app. All right, and there it is guys, up and hashing. My pick for the best hardware for beginners, the Bitmain Antminer S9. She's not the most profitable, but you can get it with a power supply for a hundred bucks and start learning. Then you can upgrade to an S19, S21, or anything you want. Thank you all very much for joining me. Please like and or subscribe on the way out, and we will see you on the next one.